If you're looking to migrate your email service over from Gmail to ProtonMail, or even if you're considering such a move, either for personal use or for your online business, then I've got some really great news for you. If you're sitting there feeling like this is gonna be a big, daunting, complex undertaking, if your stomach is doing backflips at the mere thought of migrating your email, then you're in for a real surprise. Not only is migrating to ProtonMail quite painless and straightforward, it also doesn't take a whole lot of time. So what you and I'll do here is I'm gonna lay out the process for migrating over to Proton and along the way, I'm gonna share my experience of the entire process, things that I wish I had done differently and things that worked out really great. First off though, if you're not sure if Proton is gonna be a good fit for you or not, then maybe a better starting point for you instead of this video is my full Proton Mail review. See the show notes down below if you're interested, and then when you're ready to actually move over to ProtonMail, come on back to this video. Okay, now, just so you know where I'm coming from, I had been using and testing ProtonMail for quite a long time for personal use, and not too long ago, I decided to start using Proton for my online business. I don't run a large business in terms of number of employees or anything like this. I'm a solo operator with VAs and freelancers, so I don't have full-time employees, and all I needed really were just three business email accounts. That said, if you're running a larger organization over on your side, ProtonMail can certainly handle that too. Now, in addition to me wanting to begin using ProtonMail for my online business, this also meant migrating or moving over the volumes of archived mail sitting in my Google G Suite business account. And of course, the process of migration is largely what this video is all about. Now, before we get into all that though, there are some things to consider before making your big move. Again, you're very likely sitting there thinking that this whole process of moving over to Proton is gonna be complex and time consuming. And as I said just a moment ago, it simply isn't. But that said, there are a few important things for you to keep in mind before you make your big move. So let's detail those out right now. Okay, when you're ready to make the switch to Proton, there are a few vital things to consider first up, and you're likely already thinking this, but Google's email service is obviously tightly integrated with other services. Here I'm talking about things like Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Calendar, and so on. So if you're using these other services, then you're gonna have to carefully plan out your move, your migration. For instance, at this time, Proton's cloud storage service, which is called Proton Drive, is still in beta. Furthermore, Proton doesn't offer anything that's similar to Google Docs, so you may need to figure this element out if you're a Google Docs user. And Proton's calendar is also still in beta too, but I will say that I use it daily myself with zero issues. It's absolutely awesome. So I don't think you're gonna have any problems there. The point here, the point with all of this is, as I say, you're just gonna need to plan things out in advance and be a little careful here to figure out how you wanna handle specific components depending, of course, how deeply tied into the Google ecosystem you are, of course. One thing I do wanna squeeze in here, and this seems like an appropriate spot to do the squeezing is, Proton's paid plans come with a free VPN, which works really, really great. And it's kind of like icing on the top of the Proton Mail cake. Now, if you're not sure, a VPN is simply a service that protects and encrypts your data online while you're surfing the web. If you're interested, I've got a plain English, totally non-techie video that goes into more details on VPNs, which I'll link up to in the show notes down below for you. Now, on to the actual migration process. Here goes. Okay, the first step in the process to begin using Proton Mail is obviously to sign up for a Proton Mail plan. If you're using Proton for personal use, this is fast, easy, and free. However, for myself, since I'd already been using a free account for testing purposes, and I was ready to begin using Proton for business use, I signed up for their professional plan. Now, what I did here is I signed up for my paid plan while I was still logged in to my existing free Proton account, not realizing that my free Proton account 
plus my business account would all be put under the same user account. I was used to how I had set things up back in Gmail and the way that I was using Gmail for years and years and years, where I essentially had my personal account and my business accounts, which were completely separate. So in other words, the way that I had inadvertently set things up with ProtonMail was I put my personal and my business email accounts under a single user account. And it wasn't made clear that this was going to happen as I was signing up for my paid plan. I thought I was setting up a completely new account with Proton. And of course, as you might guess, there's no way to separate out the accounts once they're set up. So I say all of this just in case you run into the same issue. Just watch out for this if you think it might be an issue for you. Now, at first, I really didn't like this setup. I really didn't like this arrangement. In fact, part of me was kind of ticked off that Proton didn't make it more clear what was about to happen. But now that I've been using my personal and business accounts all inside the same account for the last while, I'm actually totally fine with it. It's really no big deal. And it makes a heck of a lot more sense, at least for my situation. And by the way, I should totally mention this since it comes to mind, it is totally possible to have more than one user and it's possible to set up accounts to be private. So in other words, if you're in an organization that has multiple employees and you need to have multiple email accounts, you can set all of that up inside a single user account. You can have multiple users and multiple email accounts. You can really set this up exactly the way that you need. Okay, next, after getting your account set up, and again, this is for business use, the next thing that you're going to have to do is add your domain name to your Proton account and configure it to send and receive emails via Proton. Now, admittedly, my friend, this is the most technical part of the setup. Here, we have to carefully follow ProtonMail's instructions to add what are called DNS records to your domain name and also remove the old Google G Suite records. I'll tell you, when I was doing this for myself, it felt like diffusing a bomb while having the hunger shakes. <laughs> but really, I'm being overly dramatic here. It really was just my own psychosis and paranoia. It's really not a big deal. That said, though, I did make sure to make careful backups of my G Suite records just in case something blew up. So. If you're a little bit worried here, I would suggest to make backups here too, again, just in case. With this step complete, you're ready to move on to the true test, being able to reliably send and receive email through your domain branded accounts in ProtonMail. So next you can go ahead and start setting up your business's email accounts. So whatever you need, info at your domain or customer support at your domain or your first name at your domain or whatever you need. For myself, I set up just three business email accounts, including the one that you can see in this video in the top right corner. Say hello at 10tononline.com. After waiting for your domain settings to verify, which can take a little while, you can test sending and receiving from the business email accounts that you have set up in Proton mail. Now, if you have any problems here, if you're having trouble sending and receiving, double check that you've properly configured your domain's DNS records. If you are able to send and receive emails, then awesome. Everything is working and you're ready for the next step. With everything set up and functioning well, then the final step is, of course, to import your email from Google. Now, to do this, if you're using a free Proton account for personal use, then Proton Mail's Import Assistant app works perfectly. If you're on a paid plan, then you can use the Import Export app to import your emails. When I did this for myself, I used the Import Export app, and for me at least, the entire process took less than an hour, and surprisingly, this entire migration was incredibly easy and painless. It went way, way, way smoother than I'd anticipated. With your email moved over, now the only thing left is to import your contacts from Google and move over your calendars. And importing contacts and calendars is super easy stuff. For your contacts in Google, you would simply head into your contacts manager, click on export over on the right, and export your contacts either as a .cvs file or in the vCard format. Then in ProtonMail, you'd head into your contacts manager, and there you would click import, 
and then select the file that you just exported from your Google account. That is it. That's all there is to it. Equally as easy is bringing your calendars over into Proton from Google. Here, what you would do is you would open your Google Calendars settings, click Import and Export on the left, and then click Export. Then next, in your Proton Calendar settings, click Import and select the file that you exported from Google. That's it. It is dead easy. And you know what, my friend? That is it. That's all there is to moving over to Proton Mail. I am telling you, man, moving over to Proton isn't nearly as complex or technical or daunting or stomach churning. You do not need to keep Pepto-Bismol on hand for the task. It's really, really straightforward. And you know, now that I'm switched over to Proton, everything is running super smooth and super awesome. Since moving over, I've set up filters to sort email that comes into each of my three email accounts into separate folders. I've set up some autoresponders. And like I say, I've got things running great. Now, before we close things out, though, I do have a few observations that I think are important to note for you. All right, pretty straightforward stuff, right? Now, all said and done, the ProtonMail setup and the initiation of the migration process, I would say takes about 30 minutes. Then we'll have to wait about 12 hours for the changes to your domain name to complete. This is called domain name propagation. That's the fancy schmancy term for it. Like I say, that's going to take about 12 hours to complete. Then, as I mentioned earlier, actually migrating emails over from Google to Proton took less than an hour. At least that's how long it took for me. So from start to finish, the entire process takes about a day and it didn't involve any panic attacks or hyperventilating or mental breakdowns or emotional breakdowns or anything like that. The only other thing I'll add here is that if you're using ProtonMail for personal use, then one of the more time consuming tasks on your hands from here on out is gonna be changing your old Gmail address to your new Proton address wherever you need to online. I'm thinking of maybe services like Netflix, if you have a Netflix account, eBay, any forums that you use, online stores, newsletters that you're subscribed to, and so on. Beyond that though, this is all there really is to setting up and moving over to ProtonMail. Hit up the show notes down below where I'll leave you some links to some additional helpful resources. And in the meantime, if you're ready to take the next big steps forward with your online business, with your side projects, and with whatever it is that you're cooking up over on your side and get yourself set up right, not only with your email, but also with your other crucial web components. Here, I'm thinking of things like web hosting and web builders and other services. Then here's what to do. Head on over to 10tononline.com forward slash web. And what you'll find there is a free business website masterclass. This is a free self-paced online class that I've set up for you that is packed with all the details and information you're going to need to get yourself set up right with these services, as I say. So top up your coffee, grab yourself a notepad, and I'll catch you over there in just a minute.